Hey y'all, Chris here. In this video, we'll be showing you how to take two movements like these and turn it into one doubled movement like this one for your celestial clock calendar. Doing so will slow down the movements by 720 times, allowing it to show hours, days, and months instead of seconds, minutes, and hours. That way, with an accompanying face, you'll be able to tell the time and date from day to day, month to month, and season to season. The materials you'll need for this are double-sided tape, two clock movements, one of which has to be able to fit in the clock you'll be using for the calendar, and super glue. The tools that you'll need include a power drill, half-inch drill bit, cutters, a ruler or caliper, a block of wood to drill against, and sandpaper. Optionally, you can use a Dremel instead of your sandpaper and a drill press instead of the block of wood. The first step is disassembly of our clock movements. One will be the driven clock and one will be the driver and they will have different parts taken out accordingly. After taking the back off by pulling up the two or three tabs that hold on the back, you will see these gears. This one in the center with a piece of wire in the middle is your second hand gear. This is a gear that acts as a stepper between the second hand and minute hand gears. It passes through this plate. Although many movements are different in some ways, these two facts are a constant. For the driven clock, we will be taking out all the unnecessary parts, including the gears that are in between the motor and the second hand gear. That includes this gear here and this one here. We will also be removing the contact leads as there will be no battery in this movement. Removing these gears, sometimes there's only one, will keep the clock from hanging up as it will no longer be trying to spin anything other than the clock hands. As you take apart the movement, take note of where each gear lays. Here I've just taken this platform up out of the clock and that has taken up these gears as well as these and left these down in the clock. On top is the minute hand gear. It is made of two parts. Here is a stepper gear that connects the minute hand gear to the hour hand. And at the bottom is the hour hand gear. These three gears will stay in place. So let's remove the contact leads and move on to the next step. The order that this goes together in is the hour hand gear, which is one piece of plastic. Next is the stepper gear which sits inside of a well over to the side of the hour hand gear. Next is the long and skinny minute hand gear which is made of two parts. As you can see there is a clear plastic part and a gray plastic part. These will be different on different movements but there will always be two parts. After replacing the minute hand gear you put the platform down. Next is the stepper gear which looks like this. It will have a small gear up here on a stem and then a larger gear here and a small plastic nib on the back. This gear goes into this hole here, small lid gear first with the plastic nib pointing up. Next will be the second hand gear going back into its hole. Now on some clock movements like ours, the second hand gear was originally on the bottom. That is not how we want it on the driver clock. It needs to go on top. You will want to take the wire that is pushing through the second hand gear and push it to about halfway through the gear. You will want to press it against your wood block and be sure not to poke your fingers with the wire as you push it through. After that, take out the two contact leads. If you look at the second hand gear, you'll see that there's a smaller gear in the middle of this larger gear. You will want to put that facing down. Next, you'll want to take your cutters and cut the outer gear off of the second hand. You will see that there are cutouts with little tabs around this gear. 
you'll want to cut it out at this point. After cutting, it will look something like this, with the outer gear gone and the smaller inner gear still in place. Now you'll want to put the smaller gear facing down, meshing with this larger gear here. Your waist so far will be the two gears that were in between the second hand gear and the motor, the two contact leads, and the outer gear from the second hand. Now let's move on to the driver movement. After disassembly, you'll want to take out all the gears, setting aside the minute, hour, and second hand gear. These will need to be cut. Also, some movements will have this brass stem in the middle. This will need to be pushed out. You can use your wooden block for that. Simply push it out of the back. This stem can go in your waste pot. Now for cutting. First, we'll start off with the second hand gear. Its wire needs to be cut in half. We cut this stem so that it does not interfere with the driven movement. You'll want to cut the second hand's wire so that it is sticking up less than a centimeter from the top of the second hand gear. Depending on your cutters, a burr may be left. You'll want to smooth that out with your sandpaper. You'll want to cut the minute hand somewhere about right here. This is cut so that it does not interfere with the driven movement and it does not get in the way of gluing the hour hand. Be sure to cut off any burrs. An easy way to see if there's any burrs that need to be cut are to place it in the bottom of the hour hand gear and see if it'll fall out under its own weight. As you can see, this one is not binding as I pull it away from the hour hand, so it is ready to go. We will start off by cutting most of the way with our cutters and then using sandpaper to level the cut and get down to the last millimeter. Do not cut it all in one go as it could crack. Instead, cut it bit by bit, turning the gear after you gouge it a little bit. Then you can make the final cut without cracking it. As you can see, the gear is still about nine millimeters long. So we'll want to cut it down until we get to six. As you grind it down, make sure to keep it level. Sometimes you'll have to rotate it as you grind it. As you can see, we're at 6 millimeters. Now you'll want to clean this up a little bit by wiping it off or banging the dust out. And we can move on to the next step. Your three gears should look something like this. With the above being the before and the below being the after. Now to reassemble the movement. First, we'll start off with contact leads. The smaller one is already in place. And we'll take the larger one and bring it in as well. Next, our cut hour hand. The short stepper gear. Our cut minute hand. The platform and motor with its gear. Next, if your second hand gear was on the bottom, you'll want to put it back on the bottom. If it's on the bottom, the smaller part of the gear will be facing up like this. Next, you'll want to put in a gear that connects the second hand and minute hand and the two gears that connected the motor to the second hand. These can be different from movement to movement. Sometimes there will be only one gear. Sometimes there will be two like this. In this case there are two and this gear here goes down first then this one. Now you'll want to put the back plate onto the movement. Click it into place. After reassembly, your driver movement should look something like this. Look down inside. If you can see the second hand's wire sticking out above the minute hand, you should take the movement apart and trim the second hand gear down some more, as you do not want it to interfere with the driven part of the movement. Now that this is done, you'll want to set the driver movement to the side and take the back plate of the driven movement. This is what we will be cutting with the drill. Where we will be drilling is the center where the second hand gear sat. If you're not sure of where this is, you can look on the back of the movement. Most times there will be a raised bump where the second hand gear went into. We will be taking our half inch drill bit 
and drilling exactly in this spot. Be sure to cut straight down. Do not waver from side to side or else the hole will not be centered and the second hand gear may not fit. When holding it up against a block, be sure to keep your fingers out of the way of the drill, but hold it tightly up against the block so that it does not shift out of place. Take this slow. You do not want to crack the back plate or put yourself in danger. Cutting this hole will allow the two movements to mesh with each other and become one. Depending on the movement, sometimes you will find that some of these other holes have melted a little bit or have been cut completely. You will want to take the end of your cutters or something else sharp to open the hole back up so that the gears can move freely inside. Next, you will want to cut the burrs from around this hole and clean out all of the plastic scraps. You can use the end of the cutters to pull out the burrs. Here, I am using the end of a pair of cutters, but you could use scissors as well to ream out the hole. It does not have to be perfect, but if any of these plastic pieces were to fall off, they could clog up the movement and stop it from working completely. When done, it should look something like this. Nice and clean. You'll want to paste the tape onto the back of this movement, like this. Now, take your driven movement and put the back onto it. As you can see, my hole isn't centered, but the half inch drill bit gives it enough margin so that the second hand gear can easily be pulled out. That black wheel on the bottom left is the setting wheel. You want to spin that around and make sure that everything inside works freely. If everything is well, the second hand gear should spin quickly. If not, check the back plate again. Make sure that the holes are clear so that the gears can spin freely. You'll want to push the wire of the second hand so that the smaller gear is facing downward so that it can mesh into the gear into the driven clock. The wire of some movements does not need to be moved. It depends on the model of the movement. Next you'll want to strip the protective backing from the double sided tape. Now since we are using super glue the addition of water can make it set more quickly, but do not just put it anywhere. You'll want to put the water on the back of this second hand gear here, as we will be gluing the back of this gear to the front of this one. My suggestion is to take a small piece of cloth wet with water and dab the back of the gear into the water. This will apply a good amount of moisture evenly across the back. Now, depending on the type of glue that you use, you'll want to do one of two things. If your super glue is runny, you'll want to put it on a wooden block and then use one of the contact leads from the driven clock to spread it onto the top of the hour hand gear. If you use gel super glue, you can place the gel carefully directly onto the top of the hour hand gear. As you can see, it is not much glue at all. You want just enough to cover the top and no more. Because if it falls down inside, it will lock everything together. And you will either have to clean everything up on the inside or start all the way over. After putting the glue on, remoisten your second hand and carefully put it on top of the driven clock. Press the double sided tape together and then Spin this wheel on the back a couple revolutions. This will help distribute the glue so that the bond is secure. Then you'll want to press down the little wire of the second hand. This will make it so that the glue bond is stronger. Do not press it so much that you move the wire on the gear. Just a little bit of pressure is all that's needed. You'll want to hold these together for about 15 or 30 seconds depending on your glue. Now take a AA battery, put it into the back of your clock and make sure that everything is ticking on the inside. If the back isn't clear like this one, you may have to put it up against your ear to make sure that everything is spinning. Now put a second hand on the top of your movement. 
using the setting wheel on the back spin it until the second hand gear makes a full revolution this ensures that it won't get stuck as it goes around if it passes that test now pick a feature on the front of the movement and point the second hand to that feature in this case we'll take the circle on the top left after getting it right on the dot now give it 15 or 20 minutes and see if the second hand moves from that spot if so congratulations you have finished your very own celestial clock calendar movement and you're ready to put it into the back of your calendar if the movement fails any of these tests we'll have to troubleshoot it first if it is not moving on the inside or if it is moving very weakly then it may have gotten hung up try spinning the wheel again if it is completely stuck that may mean that it's glued up on the inside so you will have to take apart the movement on the back and see if so pull the glued gears apart and clean out the inside and outside of them and attempt to glue again you may have to redo your double sided tape if it works for a while and then stops try pulling out the gears of the driver movement cleaning them and then putting them back in place a piece of plastic may have gotten between the gears and stopped it from moving if the second hand gear will not stay upright but instead flops over as you move it it may be because the glue bond inside has broken take it apart and attempt to glue again if when you spin the wheel on the back it moves but with great difficulty it may be because the hour hand gear is too long either you can take it apart undo your glue bond and cut it down and re-glue it again or if you could successfully get it apart without breaking the glue bond you could put two or three layers of double sided tape to make up the difference then reassemble if these solutions do not help you to get your movement spinning leave a comment down below explaining your situation and we'll help you get it sorted out so now some time has passed and as you can see our movement has progressed a few degrees this means that the movement is working properly and it can be inserted into your clock calendar. In the next video, we'll talk about how you can make your own clock calendar and set it to tell the time and date using the sun, moon, and stars. You can also find ready-made clock calendars at coachinafight.shop. Shalawama.